Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. My name is Savannah Playford, the Director of Youth Ministry at Dixon United Methodist Church. Whenever you are watching this, welcome to today's daily devotion. Let me have it is a phrase that I have heard this past week at work a lot. When it comes from our children that we work with, it usually sounds like, oh, let me have it. But when it comes from the colleagues, it usually sounds like, oh, let me have it. The it, of course, varies in both contexts, and it honestly varies day by day. With the kids, it's usually because somebody else has a toy or an item that they want, and with the adults, it's because they need that item back. This past week at work, though, I heard this phrase a lot. Why, you may ask? Because we got these new things called a token chart. A token chart is kind of like a tally or a sticker system um, where kids can earn tokens, and then once they fill up their token chart, they can get some sort of reinforcement. For example, if a client cleans up something, we can give them one token. If they're nice to a friend, they might get two tokens. And then when they fill up their whole token chart, they can get something really cool. These tokens are always individualized for the client's favorite character, favorite color, things like that. Anyway, this last week, we got new token charts that were Encanto themed. You know, like the new Disney movie that everybody is raving about. Anyway, earlier this week, a client was complaining that she didn't have enough tokens, and insisted that she needed somebody else's token chart. It wasn't fair. And then she proceeded to say, let me have it. But in reality, the token chart that she was using was better for reinforcement. She was going to get her preferred item or activity a lot faster than her other peers because she only had to earn eight tokens while everybody else had to earn 12 to 15. But instead, she insisted that there was, there was not enough tokens on her chart and that she wanted more. When we told her that wasn't an option, she then said, well, I don't want it at all. It was an all or nothing deal for her. But let's be honest, though, even as adults, we compare ourselves to what others have. We compare our happiness, our relationship status, our wealth. We compare a lot. And this reminds me of what Jesus says in Matthew 6, 25 through 34, that says this. Worry about necessities. Therefore, I say to you, don't worry about your life, what you'll eat or what you'll drink, or about your body, what you'll wear. Isn't life more than the food and the body more than the clothes? Look at the birds in the sky. They don't sow seeds or harvest grain or gather crops into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth much more than they are? Who among you, by worrying, can add a single moment to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? Notice how the lilies in the field grow. They don't wear themselves out with work. They don't spin cloth. But I say to you, even Solomon in all of his splendor wasn't dressed like one of these. If God dresses grass in the field so beautifully, even though it's alive today and tomorrow, it's thrown into the furnace, won't God do much more for you, you people of weak faith? Therefore, don't worry and say, what are we going to eat? Or what are we going to drink? Or what are we going to wear? Gentiles long for all of these things. Your heavenly father knows that you need them. Instead, desire first and foremost God's kingdom and God's righteousness. And all of these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, stop worrying about tomorrow because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. As individuals, we spend so much of our time worrying about kids, spouses, school, income, and the list goes on and on. We may not whine like a child by saying, let me have it. But in reality, we say to ourselves, man, that would be nice to have that other thing, or that would be cool to have that thing. But when was the last time we asked that of our faith? When was the last time we asked God to let us have it? Let us have our next challenge. Let us have our next step in the journey, or let us have our next blessing. I would guess it's been quite a long time or ever that you've ever asked that question. Why is that? It's because many of us fear having nothing. We fear God truly testing us in our faith because we don't want to have nothing. We want to have it all. As Christians, we pray and think about those who have nothing, but then we go back to our normal lives. We go back to our house or our car or having food on the table. We have everything. How attached are you to the things that you have? I challenge you to find a few things that you don't need anymore and donate them. Allow yourself to get rid of those things and maybe in the process you'll be helping someone else who truly has nothing. And then ask yourself, when can you start asking God to let you have it?